In my maze game here, the player can pick up coins. Every time he picks up a coin, the counter up in the right corner goes up by one. And once he's collected all the coins, a door appears down in the corner and I can go in th that door. So how does this happen? Let's take a closer look. Hey there and welcome back. So when we first start learning assembly language and we get to a point where we want to make our own game, uh, we, we can make something like this. We can paint the background and it looks like this. And that's okay. But uh, it's easy to forget sometimes that what we have here is basically the same as this. Now, what do I mean by that? Well. We always have to remember when we're working with background graphics like this is that we have 40 columns across, 25 rows down. So even though it looks like this, we still have 40 columns across, 25 rows down. And even though we have these cool graphics on the screen, they're still characters like we have here. So for example, I have R, A, M, S, Y, S, 3, 8, and so on. And here are a couple of spaces and so on. This concept is something we still have to keep in mind even though we're making our game. So what on earth am I talking about here? Let's look at this background screen now. Now, we want the player to be able to pick up this coin, right? That's the point here. Well, what happens when he picks up the coin? Let's say the player goes over here and he collides with this coin. What should happen then? Let's take the graphics first. So let's say the player collided with the coin now. He collided with this coin. What should happen? Well, this should happen. The coin should go away because he has collected the coin, right? So what's going on here? Well, like I said, we're still just working with the screen. If I had... Um, the default Commodore 64 screen and the cursor was flashing here, I could just press the space bar and then I would get a space character, a blank character there. Basically that's same, the same thing that's happening here. I'm replacing this coin character with a blank character. That's how I just make the coin go away. Now this is the graphics, there's more going on in the background, but we're gonna go, come back to that. But it's important to understand the concept first. So we always have to remember that we're working with characters when we're working with a screen like this. So let's look closer at what I'm actually talking about. This is the character, the coin character. Like I said, it's part of the character set, the char set. This is character number 66. So we have all this text at the beginning of a character set, but then I have some custom characters here. And this is character number 66. This character is at row 16, column 23. That's where I have this uh, coin, which is character number 66. All right, but we're working with screen RAM, right? Let's say we're using default screen RAM, 0400. Huh. What's actually stored at this memory address in screen RAM? Well, it's this, this number, 66. That's the screen code for this. So right here in screen RAM, we have the screen code 66. So that's what we have to replace. Let's say it was up here in the left corner. That would of course be 0400. So in that case, we would have to replace whatever the numbers inside the 0400 with a different number. But this time it's not 0400, it's further down here. But the concept of course is the same. We need to replace whatever numbers in there, in this case 66, with a different number. What number? Well, I want this to go away, so I need a blank character, which is this one. This one right here which is character 32. 
So whatever character was in that memory address, I need to replace that number with 32. And once I do that, the character goes away. But of course, in reality, we're just replacing it with a different character in our character set. So these things might sound really obvious. Yeah, sure, we know this. Now this is kind of beginner stuff, but it's important to always keep this in the back of our mind. Like for example here, if I want to collect the coin, or I want the coin to go away, something like that. Then this is a very easy way to make something like that happen. But of course, like I said, there's more going on in the background. We also have to handle this with a little bit of code. Uh, last time we looked at the uh, character collision. And if you haven't seen that, uh, you should probably watch that first. Uh, we did the heavy lifting in the last video. We have this char, uh, check char collision subroutine where we're checking three characters every direction the player goes. So we know what character the, the player is colliding with. Like for example, last time when we were um, working with the uh, reading joystick routine, we could check if we had collided with a certain character. Now, if uh, in this case, the solid character is 65. So if I collided with that character, then it's a solid collision. I don't want to go that direction. So we're doing the same thing. Again, it's these screen numbers. This is character 65. Now, uh, we briefly saw this last time. But uh, oh, by the way, a little correction. Uh, I said that at the end of the check um, char collision subroutine, the last thing there that happened was LDA char collision. Uh, that's actually not correct because it happens. It's the last thing that happens in the macro check char collision, not in this subroutine. So here I'm running LDA char collision. So when I um, compare something right after that, then that's why I can do this compare because I've already loaded A with char collision. All right, I just wanted to clear that up. But let's look at the subroutine now. The check char collision subroutine. This is the one we looked at last time. This is where we're figuring out what row and what column the player is at. And at some point, when we figured that out, we put together the um, low byte and high byte and we construct this memory address for screen RAM. And now, of course, we can read from a certain place on the screen. And we get the screen code back and we put that in char collision, the uh, variable. But now let's look at this. Last time I said that I have uh, defined something I call sprite types. Now, of course, that's just something I made up. You could call this object type or whatever. But I made this system where uh, I have a constant and it's called player. That just means number one. But in order for this to make sense for me, I called it player. So now I can compare with, is this the player, is it uh, an enemy, whatever. So I'm comparing uh, the sprite type right now, the variable sprite type. Does it contain one? Is it a player? Because if it's not a player, then I want to go here. Because inside here, I'm running the char reaction subroutine. Uh, and that's the subroutine I'm running when I'm colliding with some character like for example the coin uh, with, uh, basically this means that i don't want the enemies to be able to pick up the coins now i could have done that as well of course but i don't want that in this game i just want this to happen for the player so uh, that's what happens here it's just a little simple check i'm checking if it's the player so char reaction that's the big thing for this video so let's uh, let's uh, go further down here. This is the so. Uh, by the way, 
you notice that I'm running a subroutine within another subroutine. That's no problem. Just something to, to keep in mind. But anyway, here's the check, here's the char reaction subroutine. So here again, I'm uh, loading char collision, that variable. It still has that screen code. So now I'm comparing, is it char coin? Meaning, is it the screen code 66? When I uh, loaded that from screen RAM, is that screen code 66? Branch, if not equal, not coin. Okay, so if it's not screen code 66, then we go down there. But if it is screen code 66, if the player is colliding with this coin, then I want to do this following thing. I want to replace the coin character with a blank character that we talked about just a minute ago. So I'm ju I just load A with this uh, constant, char blank, which is just a constant for the number 32. And I store that in the uh, zero page uh, index thing, where because we haven't changed anything there, we still have this, where we loaded from screen RAM. We haven't changed anything with those zero page uh, numbers. So we can still use that address. So instead of reading from it, this time I'm storing to that same address, but I'm storing a blank character, the screen code 32, which is just a black character in this case. So that's how I just replace that coin, make the coin go away. But I have another variable called coins collected. Now this variable, uh, is what we're seeing up in the top right corner of the screen when we're collecting coins. So if I collect a coin, I say ink coins collected. So that um, the value of that variable goes up by one. So if it's zero, it's up to goes up to one, of course. In here, I'm running yet another subroutine. Now. I'm not trying to show you the perfect way to do things or anything like that. This is just an example. So you don't have to make a subroutine inside a subroutine inside a subroutine. You don't have to do that. I'm just doing it in this case. But here I'm running yet another subroutine called update coin counter. So that's down here. Uh, the only thing that's happening up here is uh, in, in the update coin counter subroutine is that I'm um, replacing uh, well uh, i'm updating the uh character um, up in the top right corner that number that keeps track of the number of coins so i just load whatever numbers uh, is in the coins collected variable and then i add 48 to it because that's the character offset because uh, character number zero in the top right corner that's not the, 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 the number, that's not the character that looks like a zero. The first is it's like uh, the at symbol, then we have A, B, C, D, E. So the numbers start further down in the character set. It's actually 48 characters after the first one. So that's why I'm adding 48 to whatever's in coins collected. I'm gonna show you that in just a second. But anyway, this is going to result in uh, a number between 0 and 9. Uh, the screen code for that anyway. And I'm storing that in that specific memory address. And this time it's column 36, row 3. Because that's um, where I have this coin counter up on the screen. But uh, the point of this uh, update coin counter, that's just to, um, to display how many coins I have collected. So it's basically exactly the same thing that we've been doing already with the row, low, row, high table, stuff like that, zero page indexing. But now uh, when I'm doing this, I am actually changing what's in the zero page uh, addresses. So now the the uh, this thing has changed 
So whenever I'm storing something now, it's going to be in the top right corner where the coin counter is. Anyway, let's go back to the uh, char reaction subroutine. Because now I've updated that number up in the corner. I increased the variable here and I updated the visual counter in the corner. Then I say load A with coins collected, this variable that just went up by one. Compare it to nine. Have you reached max number of coins, which is th in this game it is nine. Branch if carry clear. If it's less than nine, we go down here and we're done with the character reaction. So we go down here and we end the subroutine. But if we have collected nine coins, then uh, first of all, I'm changing the sprite pointer of sprite zero. So now the sprite pointer has changed to where the player uh, is suddenly very happy. It's another sprite graphic. I'm just changing the sprite pointer for that. But then I'm running another subroutine called draw exit door. Now draw exit door, that's again, basically the same thing we've been doing using these tables. And now instead of um, replacing a coin, or something like that, now at a specific place on the screen, I'm drawing four characters that looks like this door. That's what that subroutine is doing. And uh, then uh, we're done with the uh, char reaction subroutine. But if we go back a little bit here, uh, this is the player. We did a check for the player and we did a check uh, uh, if the character we're colliding with is a coin or not. But I also have another check here. Uh, if the char character that we're colliding with is a coin, then we do all this stuff we just talked about. But if it's not a coin, what happens then? Well, I do another check. Is it character 68, char door? Am I colliding with the character, the char screen code 68? Well, that's the door. One of the uh, characters that I use to, to uh, draw the door, just one of them character number 68. If we're, we are colliding with character 68, then I just jump to main, which in this case means reset the game. So I'm just jumping, not jump to subroutine, just jumping right here. And that's what I was talking about last time. Now we can see why it's useful to initialize the system stack right here at the beginning. Because now I'm jumping here and I need to reset everything because I'm resetting the game. And that's it. That's how I can make something happen when the sprites collide with a specific character on the screen. So that's it for now. Next time we're going to look at uh, what happens when sprites collide with each other. Anyway, have a great day. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.